I remember having a big old burn on my leg. I think the only thing I was wearing was probably cowboy boots and underwear, yeah. <laughs> no helmets, you know. That was back before the kids had iPads. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Jake from Prism Supply, and this is our series, My Garage. In this episode, we're out in Iron Station, North Carolina, featuring my older, more handsome looking brother, Zach Hines. Zach is a talented builder and fabricator. Zach and I started Prism back in 2012 in a garage basically comparable to the one that we're about to see. For the record, this is the cleanest I've ever seen in this place. Zach did some, uh, some maintenance. Some maintenance, it looks great. Zach has a ton of stuff in here, and in my opinion, I think you do a pretty good job of keeping it organized for how much stuff is in one space. Space. There's kind of like a flow for everything. There's like a dirty section, there's like a mechanic section, there's a fab welding section. So I think the overall layout is really cool for such a small space. How big is the space? 28 by 30. Which I mean, for most people as, as a home garage, that's that's great and they would die for that. So it's like an oversized two car garage. Um, and there's some sections you have to move tools, parts to get to the, uh, another tool or another part. Uh, this is a fixture table, fixture so two, table. By, two by two grid. There's like a six style tolerance on it. What type of work overall do you do in this garage? Cause I see uh, motorcycles, but then I see like off-road headlights. This is for a trophy truck, off-road go around Baja or something. So any type of fab work, Harleys to trophy trucks, to hot rods, to airplanes. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, yep. What's your specialty in, in the fabrication world? Specialty tools, like what, what would you say you excel at? Probably take one. If I had to say it's my best or whatever, most skilled. This is an air hammer here, English wheel, thumbnail shrinker, bead rollers. We use these tools for building gas tanks or fenders and lots of other stuff. Panels on cars. Panels on cars or any type of any type of metal shaping. These tools will help you with that. They don't get used every day. That's why they're kind of in the corner. So you gotta move four things to get to them. With tight spaces and small garages, that's what you gotta do. But everything's on wheels, so you can move it out quickly. You can move it out you and roll it. It's a lot of fun. Just don't rush me. <laughs> and don't watch. Yeah. If you watch, it's and don't watch. If you, if you watch, it's double. <laughs> How'd you get into motorcycles in the beginning? What was your what's your first memory? I don't, I don't remember. I don't think it was thrown at us. I remember mom and dad coming home from the flea market, pulled a little, I think it was an Italian jet or a Italian, Italian jet out of a minivan we used to have. And dad fired up and told me to get on. I went for a ride. <laughs> what I'll never forget. I think I hit a ditch, rode up a tree, bike landed on top of me, burnt my leg. That's actually my very first memory. Not only my first memory of a motorcycle, that is my very first memory as a child, is my dad bringing this bike home, Zach getting on it. And I don't remember there being like a ton of instruction, no, direction, it was just, it was just like, Here's the hey, throttle. go ride and see what and happens. I think I just staying throttled it, whiskey throttle, never let go. And just, yeah, and then so I hit a ditch straight, tree. straight into like this ditch that kind of went down and there was a like a big root almost that kind of, where the tree kind of like tapered up. So down the ditch, up the taper of the tree. And I, I just kind of remember like the bike being vertical on the tree and you just falling backwards. That's like my first memory as a kid. It's kind of cool that it's like, so what we do now is yeah. motorcycle work and that being one of our first memories. Obviously I was probably crying like a little baby, but put me back on and rode away. I think it was like that same day you were like, all right, I'll try it again. Yeah. I remember having a big old burn on my leg. I think the only thing I was wearing was probably cowboy boots and uh, underwear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no helmets, you know. Those were the- uh... That was back before the kids had iPads. <laughs> I love this uh, little Evil Knievel trike thing. Is that Landon's? Yes, that's Landon's. I bought it for the kids. I probably bought it before they were born. I saw it at Auto Fair for sale and just had to have it. I've seen a few of them, and I think they had another color, a black and orange maybe. It works. And it works. And it doesn't leak any oil. How many vehicles do you own? I think I have six motorcycles that run right now. Five trucks and lots more projects. This is a 1991 Harley FXR T. About three years ago, we restored the whole bike, went through it, frame off. So our buddy Justin painted the bike and we wanted to keep it stock looking, but with a little bit of flair in it. So we went with the uh, with the wing logos and put palm trees in them and then did the, the 90s colors on it. I'm personally not a big FXR type guy. I like them, I think they're cool, I think they're reliable. Not necessarily my thing, but uh, when Zach built this bike, I was like, man, that's a bike I could ride. That's a bike that I really like and, and one that I would like to have but then he said he's never selling it to me and i'll sell him nothing <laughs> why why not <laughs> you didn't answer the question <laughs> no comment because i don't hold on to anything that's the difference between zach and i he uh i'm a hoarder he hoards things i i, I get rid it. of them where'd you get such a southern accent from your mother and dad I guess. no uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have totally different know. accents maybe uh maybe my teachers in school since i went to school and you didn't maybe, yeah i didn't go to school that's right so we grew up racing 
Our dad taking us to races and swap meets. And my dad bought this probably uh, mid 90s, I'd say, because that's I'm, I'm thinking that's our early 90s side. And he bought it at a, a swap meet. And it's been sitting in my dad's shed for, I don't know, 20 years. And so I just went over there and took it and hung it up on the wall. I don't ever remember dad uh, not having that piece, but maybe I was just too young. So. I told him if he, if he had it, we needed to show it off because it's the, Dale's the, king. the best of the best right there. Dale's the king. Is that your favorite driver of all time? Favorite driver of all time. What's this other Dale thing you got here? It's a commander of bag, country ham. Oh, a ham. Maybe a ham came in it. That's what it was. Yeah, well, Thanksgiving Dale Earnhardt ham. Well, it's inspected by the U.S., so you know it's good. So this is a 1941 knuckle building for our buddy Spanky. It's kind of, it's a full turnkey build. Doing like a 60s style show bike out of it. It's gonna be a hard bike to give up because I'm really enjoying this bike. And it's gonna turn out really, really cool. So when you're building a bike like this, obviously like there's a lot of style that goes into it. Do you feel like you spend a lot of time just kind of like sitting back and, and looking at lines and flow of things? Like what's your process like there? First thing we'll do is get a frame, which is a stock, you know, 41 frame, wheels and tires. So I get in the wheels and tires up there and then so there's a stock length VL front end with a big twin springer, big twin front leg with a VL rear leg. So it gives it a little bit of rake in it. But so I like getting the stance first looking at it and then looking, standing back, looking at it and then going from there. Overall, have a general idea in the back of your mind what I'm looking for or what I want and then we'll add a piece or you know build a piece and sit on the bike, stare at it, look at it, photograph it, look at the pictures and then you know you look at it from different angles and you can say, oh, I like that or don't like it and remake it or re, you know, or order a different piece and just keep doing that back and forth. Try to do clean and simple builds. So another pretty cool thing that I got is I've worked for some of the best NASCAR teams in the industry. And uh, we've won a lot of races and championships and got rings for, from some of those. And I learned from you know some of the best people in the industry. I'll show you those. You just keep them in a, in a koozie, don't you? Keep them in a koozie. That's how special they are to you? Yeah, so these are just a few of them. This is the, the sweep at Charlotte with Denny Hamlin and Carl Edwards, 2015. This is 2009. Coca Cola 600, 2016 Daytona 500 championship or champion ring. This is the Brickyard. That's a probably one of the coolest ones. This is a championship ring for the whole year. Kyle Busch winning one of his championships. And these are just a few of them. There's a lot more rings too. That's how you work every day. Yeah, just wearing them all. Ice baby. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your favorite bike you've ever owned? Yeah, probably so. It's a 47, six, six, 46. Yeah, yeah. 46. I just finished it last year for congregation actually the day before and rode it in the congregation in the rain so that's pretty cool. <laughs> I bought it as a basket case. All the big parts I bought together and then a lot of small parts and accessories I bought and found separate. Tried to piece it together as original as I could. Old Flanders bars with the Flanders risers. I like that you have a blue grip on this side and a white, white grip. grip. White grip. I actually got those from my buddy Dave. What's your favorite tool in the shop and why? Favorite tool in the shop is probably a lot of people think it's gonna be thinking stupid, but it's my favorite. It's a Sharpie and a tape measure. <laughs> and why? Because that's what you use on everything. That's part of your everyday carry. That's the everyday carry, yep. So you do, you know, so you got, got yeah, laying, on the spot. random, laying here, laying there, everywhere. Sharpies and tape measures. 67 El Camino I've had since I was 16. Grandpa gave it to me. Runs and drives. Nothing fancy, you know, just a good old solid small block. Original paint, all sun sun faded, sun baked. So if somebody was to ask you like, hey, how'd you collect all these tools? Like, did you inherit it? What happened? How'd you get all the stuff? And on top of that, what advice would you give somebody else? A lot of hard that work. To a lot of hard work. When you get off of work or your day job, don't go sit on the couch or don't go to the bar, you know? Find a side job or go, you know, work an extra job just to, to save up and then you can build a shop. And then you can buy tools and you can, and then you, you can work in your shop. The early years of prison, we didn't pocket a dollar. We, uh, you know, we would work, you know, we'd search Marketplace or probably before Marketplace, it was Craigslist and eBay, and we'd buy more tools and kept doing that over and over and years and years. And then, then we'd buy Harleys and, you know, sell parts that we didn't want and just work our way up and just keep hustling. That's it for this episode of My Garage. Zach, thanks a lot for your time. Where can uh, anybody on, on the interwebs find you? Probably the easiest thing would be Instagram, prism underscore Zach. That's it, can you give me a hug like you love me? I'll take you my brother, is that weird? <laughs>
And don't watch. If yeah. you watch, it's don't watch. If you, if you watch, it's double. <laughs>